Yeah, hi. How are you doing? Good, good. good. So I'm Alito Alessi, uh -huh. and I'm the founder and developer of this methodology called Danceability. And I'm here at Impulse this year, and every other year actually, <laughs> teaching a teacher certification course. This year we had 24 students from 11 different countries. That means they can go back to where they're from and work with uh, mixed abilities groups of people in improvisation and contemporary dance. Yes. Basically, the, it's, it's just the philosophy that grew out of contemporary dance that dance was for anybody. Mm -hmm. That's what we were all saying in the early 70s, late 60s, yeah. but nobody was really doing it. Steve Paxton made his effort with mm -hmm. contact improvisation, which was mm -hmm. a great effort, but still didn't include everybody. Yeah. And so I decided to see what it would be like to really try to fulfill that philosophy of dance was for everybody. So I began a project, which is danceability. And the main focus of the work actually is not people with disabilities, but it's about eliminating the concept of isolation. So uh, the focus of the work is just that. Anybody who wants to have a chance to dance can. And nobody is turned away from learning the processes of contemporary dance yeah. for any reason whatsoever, except yeah. violence. People yeah. are violent, we, yeah. we just yeah. can't work with it. So yeah, that's like consciously I, violent. Okay. Yeah, like it's interesting because one of the things when people ask me is, is that, well, sometimes I go, well, I think it's for people with different abilities, and I always say, like, us. Yes, <laughs> you know, exactly. Like everybody. That's exactly right. Yeah. It's, a, it's for all people. Yeah, because we have this idea, well, this is the people with, uh, you know, disabilities. And, yes. and then, of course, uh, that creates a certain, perhaps, even tensions in uh, whatever is the artistry or something. Exactly. And, you exactly. know, can, can you talk a little bit about that? Because, prof, you know, I, I'm working right now with reviewers or journalists. Yeah. And you, you see, well, how, you don't review this. You, yes. You, you, you are interested or not. <laughs> yeah, people think it's like social work or some kind of therapy uh -huh. for them. And that just realized that those kind of statements and perceptions just reveal those people's disabilities, actually, mm -hmm. and on their inability to really broaden their perception of what people are. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. It's not about who conforms to what. The one thing that's interesting about the world of mixed abilities dance mm -hmm. is that it's a fairly new thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to work with critiquing it, <laughs> you have to have a different kind of an eye. Yeah. Because, you know, if, could you think back to when modern dance was 25 years old or ballet was 25 years old? Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. What were the things that you judged it by then? Yeah. Are they the same as now after a few hundred years? I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. And so the work that you saw here today was not necessarily a performance, it was an informance. And we call it that so that people don't get confused and start saying, well, that was kind of a sloppy show. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. it's not a performance. It's a community event yeah. to reveal to people what some of the possibilities can be in a small model of democracy yeah. where people are really treated as equals yeah. and respected as equals and not isolated for, oh, I'm better than or you're better than and not creating some kind yeah. of trivial... Yeah. And the interesting thing is like this model is migrating to so many forms of performance now because then you, of course, we are all aging, you know? Yes. <laughs> it's like it's not that it's okay. And you see people keep performing and, not, and there's not even a, a comment about it, you yes. know? It's just uh, we actually hopefully embracing that difference yes. in the performance world. You know? Yes. So, and also, but, but of course, uh, it brings attention to the question of uh, then you have an approach that is very tied to the tradition of contact improvisation. Let's say. Yes. And yes. let's say I'm going to put in another extreme, Kandoko from, yes. you know, from England, which I respect a lot, but then they have a more theatrical approach. How, yes. How can you, if you have a comment about this uh, pose, well, let's say? Well, uh, you know, uh, they do great work, Kanduko, yeah. and yet they, they primarily, I think, work with uh, putting methods of dance onto bodies. Mm. Uh, the danceability works focus mm -hmm. is to let the dance of that particular body evolve out of it. So my job as a choreographer is not to put movement on people, but to facilitate them in revealing to themselves their own movement and allowing that to be the creative process 
that then gets distilled down into something else. Um, yeah, I forgot the first part of the question. No, I think that that's it. Well, thank you very much, and I think is, it, that says it a lot, what uh, danceability has been for a long time. How long have you been developing this? Uh, 25 years. In, in the yeah. beginning, the, it is true, we tried to teach contact improvisation to mixed abilities groups, yeah, yeah. and the danceability method actually arose from finding the situations where it actually didn't work, and how do you solve those problems? How do you solve the obstacles and make them opportunities? Yeah. And out of that, sort of evolved the danceability method. Okay. Well, thank you again. No, thank you very much. Keep the force going. Okay. <laughs> cool.